All right, how do you create the life that you really want? Not a life that somebody else wants for you, not a life that your mother or father wants for you or your husband or your wife or your friends or what society wants of you. How do you create the life that you really want? What's the step-by-step -step formula? Because maybe you're listening or watching to this now and maybe you're in a job and you're not doing what you really know you want to be doing. Or maybe you're in a relationship you know you really should get out of. Or maybe there's a relationship you really want to get into, but you're not taking action on it. What do you really want to do in life? And then when you figure that out, how do you actually create it? To figure that out, to give you the step-by-step -step formula, how we can do that, I've brought in a men's mentor. But even though he's a men's mentor, this, a lot of this stuff is going to equate to women also. His name is Daniel Francis. He's the founder of Elite Man Academy, and he's been pursuing his passion for helping men become their best selves and write their own stories, create their own life. And he joins us now from London, England. Daniel Francis, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me, sir. Well, it was great to have you. We've got uh, an Australian accent talking to a British accent. The American <laughs> listeners and viewers are probably scratching their head going, Jesus, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so, so Daniel, you're going to give us a step-by-step -step play here, a formula on how we create the life we really want, but just give us a little bit of background on you. Where'd you grow up? What's your background? You know, how did you get into this? Give, just let us know who you are. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I, I, as you can hear from the accent, I'm a Londoner all the way from sunny London, England, envious of your sun right now. Um, uh -huh. And, uh, and for, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a classically trained actor. My, my background was, uh, I loved Shakespeare. I was in love with, with being on the stage and, and, you know, really studying Shakespeare. Um, but it didn't, it didn't always start like that. I was, for, for a long period of time, um, struggled where I grew up. It, I saw lack of communication, poor communication um, was the cause of a lot of pain and a lot of wasted potential. And so... When I got into acting, I moved into the acting world, it really was to figure out how to deal with a lot of pent up aggression and, and, and negative emotions that I was harboring and carrying from, from where I grew up. Um, and it was just kind of uh, a vent and also a way to channel and understand that and to learn how to communicate effectively. Um, then I got into the dating world. I was struggling and lonely and, and surrounded by a lot of beautiful women and, and, and had no idea how to, to really get the dates that I wanted. Um, and long journey became uh, a, dating, a dating expert, a dating coach and um, traveled the world teaching men how to improve their communication, how to build really solid relationships with women. Um, and that was the turning point for me because I realized that there was a lot of... Um, a lot of pain and a lot of frustration that was coming from people not knowing how to create relationships, not, how to, not knowing how to um, communicate with themselves effectively first, and then how to then communicate with others. And that really changed everything for me, being able to work that personally with men. Yeah. And so, I mean, how did you feel about life when you were not living up to your potential? Like on a scale of one to 10, how did you feel? Like, I'm sure it doesn't sound like you were having, you were like in the depths of despair and that everything was, was awful. It sounds like it was just okay. Maybe, maybe it was <laughs> kind of like you were just existing in the world. Like how would you rate yourself out at 10? Yeah. Well, let me answer that by, 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 by saying, um, there was a point in, in my journey where, I was stood on the edge, and if anyone's been to London, Clapham Junction Station, I was taking my mum uh, to, the, to the airport, um, and I wasn't thinking about how to take my life. I was contemplating, and I wasn't saying whether or not to do it or not, I was saying how to do it, and I was on the edge of this platform, and I was going, you know what, I don't want to jump on a platform because that would be messy, and I want to have an open, food, open coffee. And then I thought about taking pills, and I thought, I don't want to take pills because if I want to go out, I want to go out like a man, right? So my ego was still kicking in. But I was on the edge. I was literally on the edge. I, was, I, hit, mm. I hit rock bottom. Um, mm. And I realized that essentially what it was, I felt so trapped by myself. It was nothing else. It was what was going on in this mind of mine. I felt so trapped and frustrated by that, and I couldn't get out of that, and I couldn't communicate and express myself. And so 
the, that journey into the dating world, what it really became, and what I became known for as well, was, um, was that freedom of expression, emotional freedom, and being able to go for what you really wanted. And I saw that it crossed over into so many different areas of a man's life, that once he got his um, communication with himself sorted out, that he actually really started to um, communicate more effectively with, with the actual world as well. So what you're talking about here is really having the confidence or, or understanding that you can create whatever world you want for yourself. I mean, speaking from my own experience, I mean, I'm Australian American. And when I was 23, I went over to London and lived in London for four years because I was like, I was feeling a little bit stifled in Australia. And I was like, I got to get out. I want to go and see the world. Australians get to, to live and work in London for two years. So I went over there. I used the British pound to go traveling and I just went and saw the world. I went down to ran with the bulls in Pamplona in Spain and I went down to the carnival in, in Brazil. And then after four years, I went over to America because I wanted to go and explore, explore America. So I, I've always kind of had an inherent understanding that you can create whatever you want for yourself. Um, just by taking action. And that's pretty much worked for me. Are there things that I wish that I would have done better? Absolutely. But did you believe like, and I always believed that I was destined for big things or I could, you know, make the, the world around me in whatever shape I wanted. Did when you were going through that depression, so to speak, did, it, is that, is that taken off the table? Like, is, is it just a situation of what's like, well, I just can't do this. Like I've got responsibilities or, I don't know how to do it. Like, is that, is that taken off the table, so to speak? No, do, you know, do you know what it was? The, I had, because I knew, and, and, I, and I completely agree with you, and I've, I've shared that uh, sentiment of knowing that there was greatness in me, that there was something there. It was that seed of greatness that I could feel where I knew there was something bigger. But when the external, when, when you're living a kind of condition-driven life or a condition-based life, living by the circumstances, then it becomes very difficult to take control, take control of your life. And so my whole thing was seeing the environment that I was in, having seen the results that I was getting, knowing that I, I was capable of more, knowing that I wanted more and not knowing how to get about and go and do it. That was the frustration. Right. We're talking to Daniel Francis, who is the founder of Elite Man Academy. And as we're recording this, um, we're actually live on my Facebook page, which is James Swanick Official. So if you are watching this as you are, as I see many people are at the moment, are watching this on my Facebook Live, uh, please do post a question if you have a question for Daniel at any stage, and I'll be sure to ask him that. Uh, if, you're watch, if you're listening to this on the podcast, be sure to, to like my official page, James Swanick Official, because I'll be doing lots of live chats there. Uh, and also just a reminder, we're going to do a little Snapchat later, Daniel and I at the end where Daniel's going to give us a little 10 second version of how to live your best life. So make sure you follow me on Snapchat at James Swanick. So Daniel, let's get into the nitty gritty here because the listener and the viewer wants to know how do they lead an extraordinary life? How do they do this? How do they put behind feelings of inadequacy or depression or feeling of hopelessness Mm. Or, and really push that aside. Have you got a formula that you can, you can share yeah, with us, Daniel? We can go through, through, through a few steps. Um, before we go into to, to the kind of depths of it and the exercises of how to actually do that, um, it takes a little understanding. The first thing that I, that I always teach the people that I work with is that um, your mission or your purpose is there's two key things to it. One, that it is self-discovered. Now, what that means is, You've got to seek. I've met, I've met so many people that they kind of wait for this apple to fall out of the tree and bump them on their head. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work like that. You've got to go searching. And even James, as you were saying, as you, you went traveling and I meet so many Australians in London. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Daniel. I know. Yeah. I know you get out of there. It's like they call us ja Jaffers, just another effing Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> I met more in London than I did when I was over in Australia. It was fantastic. <laughs> and, um, but but you, you've got to go seeking. So self-discovered. And then the second part of that is that it's self-determined, which means that you've got to decide. And for the most part, it's that decision, that moment of decision that changes everything. When someone takes that, that, that stand, they draw the line in the sand and they go, this is is what I'm going for, right or wrong, whether it goes against what I've you know, 
uh, previously done. It, it's not something that I may have done before, or it's, it goes against what other people think. Um, and that is a turning point when you say, this is self determined. I've got to make a decision. So those two things are really important to, to, to internalize. Then I look at what we call the three, I call them the mission killers. The first one is what I call emotional numbness. Now for me, this was huge. This was absolutely huge. And especially for a lot of men where we, you know, we're told to man up, we're told to hold our emotions, not, not to express our emotions. But the mission, the purpose, you get it as a sense, as a sense of purpose, a sense of mission, an emotional sense. The more cut off and numb we are, the harder it is to understand what these emotions are, the harder it is to read them and say, ah, this is a calling for me, or this is something that feels good, or this is a pull in the right direction, or this is a pull in the wrong direction. And so the first thing is really to get your senses alive again. And there's an exercise I give to some of my clients where if they're having a lot of trouble with um, their sensory experiences is to use your senses more regularly, more consciously use your senses. There's an exercise I gave to one where we had to, um, he had to walk into a park, any park, you know, any park they chose, and just to put earplugs in and use his sight to just take in the details, to start to train his sight to take in new details and things that he wouldn't have picked up before. Suddenly he starts looking at the colors of leaves and really looking at the details of, of, of the actual uh, leaf and the veins that run through it, um, looking at the bees or ants or whatever it was, taking in sensory experiences. Then to switch that up and then to, you know, put blindfold on or close your eyes and sit in the park and just listen and just to, to, to determine all the different sounds and the different, you know, uh, frequencies that you can pick out so that you start to enrich in yourself again. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, I walk from, I have a four and a half minute walk from my Los Angeles apartment down to Sunset Boulevard and into the Crunch Gym at the Sunset Five Plaza here in Los Angeles. And, um, I was just saying on my um, on a uh, live call I was doing for the for the people in my thirty day no alcohol challenge yesterday that uh, for the two minutes that it takes me to walk from down my street down to Sunset Boulevard I look up and there are these big palm trees three or four palm trees mm-hmm. and what I'll do now in the morning is that I'll look up at the palm trees and watch the wind blowing through the palm trees and I'll just appreciate them and i'll just say a uh, uh, you know gratitude wow look at that i live in southern california i can see the wind going through those palm trees look at the color of the blue sky and the backdrop of those palm trees and what that does is that it, it reinforces this idea of gratitude and it also takes you out of this constant like oh what am i going to do in the future or oh, i can't believe i did that in the past it gets you very much in the now there's a great book called the power of now by eckhart tolle um in fact i just started a meetup group because I'm wanting to get some people to come and talk about the power of now. So if you're in Los Angeles, go and look on um, uh, meetup.com and join my, my group <laughs> and we'll meet up and talk about it. But yeah, just getting in that moment and being appreciative yeah. um, can get you out of that emotional numbness that you, you referred to, Daniel. Absolutely. Daniel, we do have a question here um, yeah. that's come in from a, a live viewer on Facebook, uh, on my Facebook. Just a reminder, if you want to... Um, join the live call component of this, go to my James Swanick official Facebook page and like it and follow the page and you will automatically get updated when I do a live call. We've got a question here from Jeff uh, Kontz. I hope that's how I pronounce it correctly. And this is his question for you, Daniel. I live in a small mining town in Northern Canada. I have a career that's relatively good, but my passion is health and fitness. How do I transition and still pay my bills and support myself and fiance uh, while searching and creating something bigger for ourselves? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. That's a fantastic question. Now, different people, um, what was was the gentleman's name? Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, thanks for the question. Um, Different people operate, let's say, as a starting point for for me or anyone that I work with is... um, my starting point is always modeling, okay? So it's always to find people who are doing something that's similar to what it is that you want to do. So there are, there are fitness experts or fitness people who have fitness side businesses or whatever it is. First, to determine what you actually really want to do with the fitness, right? What level you want to take it to. And then to find people who are actually doing it 
similar to the way that you want to do it and you model them. It's the quickest, it's, the, it's absolutely the quickest way. Mentors and modeling for me has, has absolutely changed everything because, it, you know, Tony Robbins used to say, um, success leaves clues. And when you can find someone who has already done it and you can follow their footsteps, it shortcuts the learning curve. The other part of that, sorry, James, do you want to, do you want to jump yeah, in? Yeah, no, there? I was just going to say Picasso, the great artist, was very mm -hmm. uh, famous for saying a phrase, which is uh, good artists copy and great artists steal. <laughs> so it's like, you know, just follow. I mean, I actually learned that from my mentor, Ty Lopez, who I speak about a lot here. Um, who's a creator of the 67 steps and he's taught me a lot of stuff to do with business the mere fact that i'm done a podcast or have a snapchat or youtube is because i follow him uh, if you're listening or watching this and you want to learn more about ty lopez just go to jameswanick.com forward slash 67 steps so you go to my website jameswanick.com forward slash 67 steps and you can learn a little bit more about my mentor who helped me and certainly in business in the last couple of years but you're absolutely right. You know, I, I actually invested in learning from Ty because um, I didn't know what I didn't know. And he was uh, and still is a master of online marketing, which is an industry that I wanted to get into. And my criteria for investing in his coaching and training was, is he 10 years plus? Does he have 10 years or more experience, more experience than I do in that field? And the answer was yes, absolutely he does. And so therefore I'm like, I'm going to learn from him. That's, that's a worthwhile investment. Uh, just yesterday I went and did a, um, uh, they give you a free kickboxing uh, session at Crunch Gym. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I went in there and I asked, you know, I wanted, I'm thinking about doing kickboxing or boxing, I want to hire a personal trainer, not sure. And they said, we'll give you a complimentary free class with our top trainer, a guy called David. Um, and see how you like it. So that's what I did. I took the free class and at the end of it, I'm like, damn, this was really good. This is a good way for me to burn fat. This guy's been doing it 15 years. You know, he's been doing martial arts training for 15 years. So yesterday I'm learning stuff like where to hold the, the, the fist to, like, to protect the face. And whenever my, my, my hands came down, he'd give me a little tap on the face, not a punch, but like a little tap to remind me to keep it up. And then I was coming in with doing a jab with moving my elbow out to the right. And he told me, no, keep it in but yeah. nice and close. So I've got someone who's got 15 years more experience than me. And now he's coaching me and training me. And now I'm just copying what, what he does. So, so for Jeff, um, sorry, I, I'm finished what you were going to say, Daniel, in yeah. response to Jeff's question. But that was, that's, that's exactly it. So Jeff, so first, first and foremost, a, a mentor and a model, right? Um, and then the second thing becomes about, how you how you manage your time because we've only got 24 hours in the day like we've you know the most successful people the most you know unsuccessful people whatever it is we all share that and so it becomes about taking time from from different things i was told something by a mentor of mine years ago he said uh, you earn a living at between 9 and 5 p.m and you get rich between night between 5 and 3 in the morning right so you go <laughs> fortune between five and three in the morning and so it really becomes about monitoring how you use your time that is just so key um so really saying well what is important what do what's how are you spending your time in the evenings after work now um, and where can you borrow time the third thing i would say you've got your did he say he had a fiance i think it's yeah he said he had a um so he wants to support himself and his fiance while searching and creating something bigger for themselves fantastic the the there's something I talk about um, in within the dating field about uh, the relation a man's relationship with with women can either do one of three things drive drive him distract him or destroy him and what it sounds like there is that you've got a great support network which is fantastic and to to really leverage that and to bring her on board with your vision for something bigger and actually create that together and, and enroll her in that um the the bigger thing that you want to build as well it's just it's it's fantastic i love that thank you for your question jeff and thank you for your answer uh daniel we're talking to daniel francis who's the founder of elite man academy and even though we're speaking in the context of uh men here uh, we do have a lot of female, uh, a lot of women listeners and viewers. So, of course, the same, you know, give or take a few things, the same concept can really work for you as well. So, please stay with us. 
Uh, great to have you here. Daniel, you were talking about, um, we were going through a few steps here on how to create the life that you really want. You were talking about mentor, getting a mentor, modeling other people, monitoring your own time, looking out for emotional numbness. Uh, what else have we got, Daniel? Yeah, so looking at the obligations, that's the next one. There, there are a lot of things that we feel obligated by, things that, that um, really catch us, whether it's um, people, whether it's the job, whether it's um, these kind of prior commitments. And a lot of the time it stops a lot of people from even venturing out to seek what it is that they want because they feel as if they're trapped by, um, by these obligations. So we have to monitor that and, and investigate it and say, well, what are the things that I feel have are stopping me? What are the obligations that I have in my life that stop me from really going for what I want? We can get trapped by our identity of who we have been in the past, whether it's, um, you know, I, I remember when I was an actor, when I was just an actor, and I was trapped by that identity because there were certain roles or certain behaviors, certain expectations that came with this actor. And therefore, me going into business and me going into, you know, online marketing, all those into that world was outside of the realm of being an actor. And therefore I, I was hesitant to go and venture right into it. So we have to investigate that. I, I, one of my clients, Steve, um, he was a trader for a long time. But really, what he really wanted to do was be a musician. He wanted to write songs. He wanted to produce music and his identity of trader, even though he was financially successful, done he's financially free he still was about to go and build another trading company and i asked him i said steve what do you really want to do and he said well i want to go and do music but i'm 43 man like I said right so we had to look at how the identity had trapped him and say we have to reinvent that mm. to do what you want but not if you see yourself as this trader, if you see yourself as the actor, if you see yourself as the doctor, rather than seeing that as a component of what you do, mm. rather than who you are. So stepping away from the identity. So I have a question relating to that. Um, uh, I want to grow my businesses. You know, I, I'm the creator of the 30 day no alcohol challenge, which inspires people to reduce or quit alcohol. I'm the uh, host of the James Swanick Show podcast, which yeah. you know, interviews people like yourself, relationship experts, health experts, talk about my life. Um, I'm the creator of Swanee's Blue Blocking Glasses, which uh, when you wear them an hour and a half before night, they block the blue light. And so it helps you sleep later on at night, um, makes you sleep better, burn fat, feel healthier and more refreshed in the morning. And all of these things um, are terrific. And I get to build these businesses and it's all in the health self-development world. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? I really want to sing, not professionally, but I want to sing. Like I can't sing a note. I can play guitar and I can play the piano, but mm. it frustrates me that I don't, I can't belt out a tune when I'm in a car with someone for fear that they're going to go, man, your voice sucks, which it does. <laughs> and so my question really is, um, is that, it's taking, if I committed to say a lesson or two a week mm -hmm. for three months, okay, um, is that a good use of my time or am I better using that time in the pursuit of growing the bigger picture, which is the businesses because I can inspire the most people with health by uh, maybe I, instead of doing the hour of learning how to sing, which is just a fun kind of thing, maybe I spend that same hour growing my podcast audience more or uh, uh, inspiring more people to listen to people like yourself, Daniel Francis, or buy more of the Swanee's glasses so I can help more people sleep. So where do you draw the line and go obligation versus priorities versus fun versus mission? Like how do you, how do you figure that out? Fantastic. Um, so it's, that's such a great question. The essentially, this is why. So one of the things I teach men is that cave time. The one of the first steps is cave time, and this is where we go into isolation and we sit in silence, where we actually we, we are able to dial into what is speaking, what is calling from us. So the, a simple question, a, a, a question as simple as what would I love. Mm. is really important to be able to ask that to sit back where i'm sat right now 
is my rocking chair. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm just sat in my rocking chair because I am. Um, I, I was in. I was in a, a, at a spiritual retreat a few months back uh, in Concord, Massachusetts, mm-hmm. and I had an opportunity to go to Ralph Waldo Emerson's house and and uh, and where Henry David Thoreau's um, cottage was, and I was with my mentor Mary Morrissey, and one of the things that kept popping up were I saw rocking chairs in all these houses and people used to sit and think and they used to, to have that space and that time to, to, to direct their consciousness and direct their thought and tap into their subconscious mind and infinite intelligence. So we've got this voice which, which is all the time talking to us and it's about us dialing into it and listening to it. So if you were to stop and say, would I love to sing? What would I love to do? What would I really love to do right here? And if the voice comes back to you and it says, that would feed your soul, <laughs> right? Then the, the, the act of singing would probably, I can't say probably, it's different for everyone, but what that would do for you and how that would translate into your businesses and, and the energy and the enthusiasm that it would give you, the sense of new life it would give you could actually, you know, infuse your listeners, infuse your business even more than if you were just to work on the business on its own. But only yeah. you can really decide that. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's a good answer. So I should really be doing it because then I can tell great stories and then I can teach me to like get out of my comfort zone, uh, push myself so I can sing The Hills Are Alive with the sound of music in a public spot <laughs> at some point and then I can share and maybe inspire others to get out of their comfort zone. And so, singing, think, just, just, to, just to jump in there, I mean, because, you know, I, I, I trained classically as an actor and we had to do a lot of singing, do musicals and stuff. And singing is a heightened experience. It really is. It's that, that heightened emotional experience. So I would, I, from, from, you know, a singer and I write songs as well, doing that for yourself, giving yourself that gift is fantastic. And you're in LA, so uh, check out Roger Love or Peter Pergolis. Pergoli, I'll send you over the, some details, but okay. they're fantastic. Anyway. We're talking to Daniel Francis. He's the founder of Elite Man Academy, who's been pursuing his passion for helping men become their best selves and write their own stories. Um, we have uh, Yvonne Grace from New Zealand, who is uh, following us now on Facebook Live. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on the podcast, uh, let me remind you, just follow me at James Swanick Official on Facebook and you can watch these interviews taking place live and that way you can ask questions. It's more interactive. Uh, James Swanick Official, you got to go to that page and follow me or like me and then you'll get notifications on this. Um, Yvonne or Jeff or Connie who are on watching live at the moment, if you have questions for Daniel about your own life, please do ask them. Uh, please do ask them now and I'll be sure to pass it on to Daniel and, uh, and, uh, and he will answer those for you. So, uh, okay. So you're asking, we're, we're looking at our obligations. We're asking ourselves, what would I love? We're getting in sync. Um, we're starting to develop a plan, a formula. We're starting to, to kind of really understand what it is that would truly make us happy or what our purpose is. What, what are we doing now, Daniel? What's the next step? Yeah. And one more, one more mission killer to, to, to look out for is, uh, are the distractions, the distractions of life. For, for men, I highlighted three that I saw coming up constantly with my, with my clients. No doubt they passed on to women in some, in some category uh, or some aspect of it. Uh, but the three distractions, and this is about when, when we're looking at seeking mission here. Number one is money. The, the pursuit of money can, can really detract from what is really come, trying to come through us. Now, of course, you and I both know money is extremely important and the freedom that it can create. But I've seen a lot of men just get trapped by the pursuit of money in itself, as, in, as if money is the outcome, money is the reward, and they forget what the, the, the actual deeper purpose for them is. So that's something to be aware of. Um, women. <laughs> this coming from the industry that I was in, the constant, when guys get caught on the constant chase, the constant pursuit of new women and new gratification, it, it becomes, this chase becomes almost gratifying in itself. That can be a huge distraction. The, our brains are, are, are wired for survival and for replication. So I, can, I, I understand what the chase is in the sense of 
getting a new, you know, bringing a new woman into your life and just for that chase purpose, the brain almost rewards it from a survival and replication perspective. But that, that isn't necessarily helping you fulfill the deeper purpose and the deeper mission. What I've seen is when guys have a, a support base, having a woman in your life who is um, extremely supportive and who, who you click with and who actually gets it, um, that is, there's nothing, there's nothing actually better than that. Um, the motivation that comes from having a ma- an amazing woman in, in your life is, is fantastic. Um, and then sensory gratification, another distraction of, of chasing, uh, constantly chasing peak experiences for peak experience sake. Emotions pass, right? These peak experiences pass. And the deeper sense of, of fulfillment comes from when we're actually creating and when we're serving. So it's easy to get caught in the, uh, I want another, another fix. I want to do, you know, another peak experience. I want to go and climb another mountain or jump out of a plane another t- uh, once, once again. It's easy to get um, caught in that and feel like we're really fulfilled, but it's fleeting and it's not lasting, right? So... Yeah, it's funny, you know, you say that and that's very interesting because um, I went to the Super Bowl recently, my Denver Broncos won and I've been a lifelong Denver Broncos fan. I love them. And I've been to, the la- I've been to eight of the last nine Super Bowls, wow, um, which is amazing. And then I also have been to the last nine or sorry, I think I've been to eight of the last 10 Sundance Film Festivals. Mm. That's it. it takes place in Park City, Utah. Also takes place uh, in, well, that takes place in January. Super Bowl is the first Sunday of February. So it's around the same time. January is a pretty hectic month for yeah. me because of those two events. And, and when you go to these events, there's like parties that you meet new, amazing people. Mm. Um, it's just one party to the next party, to the next party. Um, at the Super Bowl, I went to the Direct TV party. I saw Run DMC, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I met Vince Vaughn. I met um, uh, Mark Cuban, the billionaire. I got chatting to Liam Hemsworth, the Australian Hollywood actor. Uh, I um, who else was there? Jer- Jeremy Renner from the Born, one of the Born Identity movies and the X Men movies was there. And these celebrities, and it's it's like it's giving me this little bit of a dopamine rush, right? The fact that I'm 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 socializing with them when i'm at sundance film festival same thing i've met jennifer aniston when she was there uh reggie bush kim kardashian like all these kind of cool things and you get the photo with them you have a little chat and that's awesome and that gives me a little dopamine release and it's a great experience but what i've certainly noticed in the last few years since i've been going to these same events is that the 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 temporary rush that i get from that is awesome right it's a lot of fun but what i'm finding is is that i'm actually getting a longer more sustained pleasure from doing other seemingly less sexy things less celebrated things such as going for a hike with whoever the woman in my life is you know going for it like i went to palm springs a couple weeks uh, weekends ago and i went hiking and it was beautiful and i saw the like it was, I saw these palm trees and this little oasis in the middle of the desert and and that was really really fun just in the quiet time um so i've be kind of been re-exploring my whole relationship with going to these events like the oscars are coming up there'll be parties for the oscars the academy mm-hmm. awards and i'm going to go to them it's going to be fun Absolutely. but i'm putting but i'm putting less importance on those events now and realizing that they're all just temporary pleasures rather than long-term pleasures now I just speak before I get your take on this, Daniel, I, I want to stress, this is not me knocking those events, right? This is, it's not to the contrary. I, like I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't have gone and done and enjoyed those events. Mm. Going to the Super Bowl is fun as hell. And if, <laughs> and if your life is about like being happy and doing cool shit, that's pretty damn cool. Meeting famous people and hanging out and, get, and getting them in conversations is cool as hell. Going to the Golden Globes like I did is cool as hell. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening, if you go to my YouTube channel, James Swanick, you'll see a, a, a video I posted there recently called How to Meet Celebrities at um, the Golden Globes. So just type in James Swanick, follow me on YouTube, and you can see a video of me walking around at the, on the Golden Globes red carpet. Um, I'm laboring on this point, Daniel. Let me wrap it up. The point I'm trying to make is that... Um, uh, 
long term things like relationships or walks in the park or looking at the tr- at the wind blowing through the leaves and just stopping and smelling the roses so to speak um actually gives me longer term happiness than the short term high that i get from going to these parties and making really cool things does that make sense have you got any thoughts on that oh no I, I, well absolutely I, it's it's um it's like sugar and a, a, I, li- I liken it to you know the simple carbohydrates versus the complex carbohydrates so if you you know you you have a chocolate bar versus having you know a sweet potato or a, or a banana <laughs> right right um, one's going to burn for longer and, and, and is and is and is more consistent and sustainable um and and that's what it's like and and hey i love chocolate right? so it's not like chocolate's bad but it's in everything in moderation right the whole nutrients from it right so, so i i completely agree with that and i think that what happens is over time is that the the short little spikes they they start as big spikes in the beginning and then they start going Right, so the spikes yeah. aren't as big, and yeah. so people start st- trying to do more extreme and extreme and extreme things in order to get the high that they once got, and it, never, and it doesn't come back. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, even just to equate it into romance, I mean, I, I'm 40, I'm not married, I don't have kids, and I've been, I had some great single days in my 20s and 30s. Let me tell you about it; it was awesome. But I, I also got into my early 30s and realized that I was addicted to the rush of chasing, you know, I was addicted to that little, little spike. But in later years now, in the past five years, as I've, as I've started to mature, obviously, and, and, and I start to appreciate uh, lengthier conversations, uh, less trivial conversations. I, I um, savor uh, relationships, if you like, um, rather than chasing like, the, you know, the grass is always greener. Now, look, I, I'd be lying if I said, I wasn't um, easily distracted, you know, mm. by a pretty new woman or or a woman's beauty or something like that. I mean, I do. I it's it's like it's like anything, right? It gives you a dopamine release. Yeah. Um. But it's funny, you know. Call it wisdom. Call it experience. Call it just getting older. Calling it whatever you want. It's it's amazing how you start to appreciate uh, deeper longer term more meaningful conversations or relationships more so than the constant chase 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 guys who are listening to this who are in their late teens won't understand <laughs> and nor should you if you're no, a late no. teenager or early 20s just go out there and sow go your balls seeds <laughs> absolutely go balls to the wall in- because it's awesome yeah it really it is-, is awesome apologies to to deeply religious people who you know one person marriage and anything but um just live your life. Go crazy. You have my permission because it's fun as hell. And at some point you're going to have, you, you'll hit that stage where you go, you know what? Now I understand that I've moved on from that stage. Yeah, but moving on from it and never having done it are two different things. Is there, you go. there you go. You're absolutely right. I, I definitely believe in experiencing and, and, and in doing it. And, and I do love women. And, you know, I, James, I had, I had the most incredible experience of my life thus far today. My, my, so my baby sister had a baby today. So my birthday was Congratulations. yesterday. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. My birthday was yesterday. We thought the baby was going to come on my birthday, but he wanted his own day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, I don't have any kids yet. I held that baby in, in my hands and I just cried. And it was just the most incredible experience. There's, there's, there's nothing like it. And I think... For, for um, you know, I mean, women women have the 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 honor and the privilege and the pleasure of actually bringing that life through and and, and rearing it. For a man, that level of I've never even even though it's my just my nephew, um, and he has a dad, and you know they've got their family. The sense of responsibility that I now feel just from seeing my baby sister's baby and that there's nothing, no rush that I've experienced so far in my life that compares to what I felt today as I held that baby. It, it, it's, it's unmatchable, not even close, you know, and it's, and it's really changed a lot of the ways that I think about this, you know, the whole mission thing and, and what, what it means to live. Because I do think once we experience, um, 
you know, a, a parenthood and bring kids through and let that level of responsibility for a man, there's nothing more uh, demanding of ourselves. Yeah. I no. share, I share your, your feelings for, for children and things like that. My, my brother, Edward, he's, uh, he's two years younger than me. He has two children. Uh, so I'm an uncle mm. to Sadie, who's about four, and uh, Rex, who's almost one, I think. Fantastic. And I've spent some time with them in the last few months, once over in Oxford, where they're based, just outside of Oxford, uh, I should mm. say, um, in September, and then again over the Christmas break back in Brit- my hometown of Brisbane, Australia. and Man, I tell you what, uh, I realize that I really love kids and I also realize I'm pretty damn good with them too, if I don't say so myself. Sadie loves me. I'm a huge (laughs) huge fan of Sadie because she loves me. And Rex smiles at me and giggles at me. I'm sure he's smiling and giggling at everyone, but it just makes you feel good to look into like a baby's eyes or a little toddler's eyes and they're looking back at you with such fondness and affection. You just go, this is good. Purely, and it's so genuine. It's, it's, real you know yeah. they, they haven't learned to mask they haven't learned to right to, to deceive it's just pure because they because if they don't like you they'll also tell you as well to avoid you right you know right so, um, that's fantastic yeah yeah and uh, it's funny you know going back to your suggestion of modeling and men- getting a mentor and, and modeling people who've done it before one of the things i realized um recently was that i don't have any good mentors or models in my life of happily married people with kids and I would like to have kids not sure about the marriage but recently I've been I've been reaching out to the people that I do know who are married and have kids and just seeking their advice I had a very lengthy conversation with a dear friend of mine in San Francisco at the Super Bowl who was there we, we I actually sought him out and said hey can we meet up and have breakfast together and so we did we met up and he's married with three kids lives over in in, uh, in New York City and I asked him tell me about married life tell me about being a father what's it like and I got great intel on that you know like it was great great advice i've uh i sought out um another friend of mine uh, who i haven't seen in some time who's uh married and has a a young daughter and i'm meeting up with him next week to seek his advice so so this is again any area of your life where you feel like you're struggling with or you don't know about seek them out i realize that i don't have any mental i don't i'm not like actively friendly or hanging out all the time with happily married couples yet that's something that i think that i want so what should I do? I should put myself in an environment where there are happily married couples with kids. Absolutely. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Um, we're talking to Daniel Francis, who's the founder of Elite Man Academy, who helps uh, men. He's a men's mentor. Um, we'll take a question here from uh, Yvonne Grace in New Zealand, who asks, how do you guys keep yourself focused on your purpose daily? Do you write goals, visualize? What's your routine, please? Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, this, this is, this is probably hands down the most important part for me after I found out what it was um, the daily rituals and the daily habits are, are just absolutely key. Um, goal setting is, is number one part of that. I have to know what I'm striving for. And then there's two, two things that changed a lot for me and I call them master my mornings and nurture at night master my mornings and nurture at night. So my phone doesn't go on until a certain point of the day. I'm trying to get it late, even later back. Right now it doesn't go on till 11 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I wanna, I'm pushing it back to try and get it to 1 p.m. Um, but really and truly that morning time is so crucial to really set my day in motion, especially you know being uh, working for myself and, and um, not having the, the schedule imposed on me by, by a job. Uh, you have to be so, but even if, even, even if you are in a job with my clients, that first uh, hour to two hours in the morning is crucially important. And what you do there, I have a ritual in terms of uh, meditation. I have a ritual in terms of making sure that I drink enough water and fluids in the morning. Um, and then also reading for, for either 30 to 60 minutes in, in whatever field. So, um, you know, now my, my interest is in business and marketing, um, and that's something that, I'm, that I read in and focus on. Um, but whatever it is that you want to specialize in or wherever you want to take your life, that 30 to 60 minutes of reading and nourishing your mind in the morning and mastering your morning is really key. The nighttime, the subconscious mind is 
more easily programmed at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. Our brain waves change. And as we're about to go into sleep, what you put into your mind before you go to sleep, that's got eight hours of churning over and going. You're, you're suggesting to the mind that these are the things, these are the important things that you want to have stored and worked on. So I'm, I protect my night. You know, I know so many people who watch, you know, TV before they go to bed and they're just running those images or they play computer games before they go to bed. They're running those images over and over while you sleep. The mind is just churning on that. You've got to remember this, that our, our mind, our body, these are intelligent systems within themselves. I can't, I, I couldn't tell you how to grow hair. I couldn't tell you how I'm growing my nails. I couldn't tell you what is keeping my heart beating. Every time I want a reminder of how intelligent my body and, and this thing called life is that's happening to me and through me, um, I put my finger on my pulse and I feel it. And I think even if I wanted to, with my mind, I could not stop this thing from beating. It's not my choice, right? So there's this intelligence that's going on and we have to nurture it with good food. We have to nurture, we nurture the body with good food. We have to nurture the, the mind with good material. So what are you putting in there? What books are you reading? What, you know, listening to James show and, and James's show and, and, and really getting great stuff in there, nurture at night as well. Those would be two of the key things, the, the two places that I would start. Yeah, it's funny. I, I have been experimenting with my mornings now for, man, 12, 18 months. And to be honest with you, it's always changing. I don't have the winning formula yet. What I, what I started with uh, two days ago as an experiment was, was this. Uh, wake up at 6.30. Um, and from 6.30 until uh, 6.45, I write in a gratitude diary and I do 10, well, sorry, I, I should, let me rephrase that. I'll do from 6.30 to 6.40, I'll do meditation, 10 minutes of the Headspace app. And then from 10.40, 10, uh, sorry, 6.40, 6.45 till um, about five to seven, I will write in a gratitude diary. I have this thing called the five minute journal. And I find that writing in that just helps me stay positive and gets me into a positive frame of mind, gets me thinking about um, opportunity rather than obstacles. Mm -hmm. And then I'll sit down at, um, uh, at my, uh, on my sofa and I will read uh, for until the bottom of the hour, which is 7.30. Um, mm -hmm. Yesterday I was reading a book called Scrum, The Art of Doing Twice the Work and Half the Time. Um, and just from reading that, I came up with this amazing uh, um, um, uh, um, strategy, if you like, or little game to prove that if you are a multitasker, then you're not being very effective with your time. And so I learned this technique. And then yesterday on my uh, Facebook live, I recorded a video teaching other people this. And then I've stuck it subsequently. I'm about to stick it on YouTube. If when you start listening to this, it'll already be on YouTube. And it was, it was called, um, you're dumb if you are a, if you multitask. So it's a little catchy title, but the point I'm trying to make is that by creating that 30, 35 minutes to read, I came up with a new way of being more productive in my day. Like I realized, oh my God, I'm slaughtering much of my day from jumping from project to project to project rather than just staying on one project, finishing it and moving on to the next one. Um, then at 7.30, I created this habit of going into my closed Facebook group of the 30-day no alcohol challenge. Um, these, are, these are members, paid members who've joined, who are doing the challenge. And I was being a little bit sloppy in the sense that um, I would go in there a few times a day or sometimes I wouldn't go in there for three or four days. I wouldn't comment. And then I'd quickly sort of, you know, try to do three or four days yeah. with the comments in yeah. like one day. And I'm like, you know what? I can make this a daily habit. Just 15 yeah. minutes, 7.30, 7.45, go in there and answer people's questions and do that every day rather than like, you know. And then after 7.45, don't go back in there for the rest of the day. Don't go back in. Wait until tomorrow morning. Now, I did that and that was a hell of a productive day. Mm. Having said that, today, it was completely the opposite. I, I slept in to 7.00. 7.30, I was at a rush to go over to the gym. I, uh, I had breakfast today. Usually I don't eat breakfast because I've been doing intermittent fasting. It was just a mess. So I know what is the best formula for me, but I can tell you, even, like, even though I know that's the best formula and most of the time I do what is most effective for me, I'm also a human being. I've also got a bad case of ADD and sometimes I, I get 
derailed. Um, I, I, I look at it this way. Um, I eat paleo style. I'm, I'm, I'm a paleo enthusiast. And I say it this way, 85% of the time I eat paleo. I eat pretty well. 15% of the time I will go to town and eat ice cream. Mm -hmm. I will eat lime flavored, chili um, flavored, uh, uh, not Doritos, um, cheetahs, no, cheetahs. What are they called? I don't know. They sell them down at my gas station. They're delicious. They're so bad for you. Uh, I will eat that crap. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. Yeah. 85% of the time I'm doing it all right. So just to wrap this up, um, experiment with a morning routine. But whatever you do, don't turn on your damn cell phone because then the emails start coming in, the WhatsApp start coming in, the, f the little red notification from Facebook comes in <laughs> and you will go down a rabbit hole yeah. and you won't get out of it. So I'm trying to get better at that as well. Like just no way, I'm not turning on the damn phone for the first hour and a half of, of the day. Yeah, um, and reading. I, I find that you know what I just I do. I put my phone on airplane mode at night, so it's not on. So I don't have because there's a thing within our mind that we we hate. Nature abhors a vacuum, and a human mind hates an open loop, right? So when we've got if there's something that's been opened, let's say for example, you ask someone a question and they don't answer, you notice the pull that is created within you or you send someone a text message, you send a woman a text message, she doesn't reply back. There's this void that is created and our mind just can't hack it. Right. So if you see a me an unread message on your phone or an, un an unanswered email, it, the pull on the mind is incredible. So I don't want to see them at all. So, I, so when I, I put my phone on airplane mode before I go to bed so that when I wake up, there isn't, a ton of things on the on the screen that i do exactly the same thing i do yeah. exactly the same i started doing it months ago it's not very good for all those women who are calling me late at night for booty calls daniel booty calls out the window. go straight right. to voice message <laughs> 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 i have had that complaint about from one particular one particular uh woman who showed I had a booty call house. for you what happened she's <laughs> like i damn i tried to call you and it went straight to voice message what were you doing i was like i was sleeping <laughs> Why were you trying to call me at 1.15 in the morning? She's like, um... I know what you're up to. Yeah, yeah. yeah I about it. <laughs> but, uh, if you've got a bunch of women that, you know, that are trying to booty call you, it's not the best strategy to get your booty calls, but it is great for productivity and for mastering your morning. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, let's wrap, start to wrap this up. We've been going 52 and a half minutes, Daniel. So we want right. to do a little good bookmark to this or, or bookshelf or whatever the Absolutely. phrase is to try and close this up. Because we talked about a few things. We talked about um, emotional numbness, making sure you get a mentor, modeling other people, how to monitor your time how you spend your time after work, looking at your obligations, asking yourself, what would you love? Um, for men in particular, pursuing money for money's sake is a big distraction. Pursuing you know, a new array of women or different women is a big distraction and constantly seeking you know, peak experiences um, all the time, which gives you temporary little feels is also a big distraction from your deeper fulfillment. Do you want to just wrap all this up? Daniel, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll, you and I are going to do a little Snapchat. We'll say goodbye to our Facebook live viewers because I'm going to need the phone back to do the Snapchat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just wrap this up for us, Daniel. That's it. So what I would say, I'd give one, one thing um, for me in terms of starting to, because cause those, the, these are the precursor to actually digging in to start finding your mission, right? So um, for me and for my clients I've worked with, the biggest, the biggest way that I start to dial into what is really important is, and I call it the great clarifier, and it, it is death, right? And it sounds grim. It sounds like this interview is about to take a nosedive, but it death is the great clarifier and it gives urgency. And so there's two projections that I do. I call it the deathbed projection. And as human beings, we have this unique facility that is incredible, which is the gift of our imagination. We're already using our imaginations. There's some people that say, you know, I don't have a good imagination, but we do. If you ever have feared anything, then you've been using your imagination because most of the time we think about what's going to happen. We imagine things happening in the future that are negative and therefore it paralyzes us. So when we start to command our imagination and use it for our advantage, it's enormously powerful. So this deathbed meditation that I do, you get still. Again, if you've got a rocking chair at home, <laughs> just sit back and rock away. Close your eyes. And we can project forward to the point of 
the end. Mm. Okay. And I imagine going to my death moment and I see it and I go there, I go, I fully go there, experience it as if I'm seeing it through my eyes. Mm. I'm laying on my deathbed. I'm looking out. My, it just so happens that the place where I want to be is on, on, in my, uh, on the ocean front looking, I love the ocean. And from that place, I've projected forward and I start to ask from two different perspectives. We're motivated by pain and we're motivated by pleasure. And each individual will have a different response to either pain or pleasure. So the pain, I ask, what would I be pissed off or whatever it is, so disappointed that I didn't do in my lifetime? What needs to come forward? Right? What would I be pissed off that I didn't do in my lifetime? That's more of the pain, the regret. The other side of that is saying, what would need to happen for me to get to this point and be ecstatic? and ready to cross over with peace and feeling like I've done it all. Everything I needed to do, all the important things that I've done it. So we're looking at pain and pleasure. But that for me, death is the great clarifier and it adds urgency. And that's how I would, you know, there are other ways I do it, but that's probably one of the, one of the most powerful ways. Yeah, we're all going to die. You just when you come to terms with that and just accept it, um, you know, and then it's all of a sudden you've got, uh, you've got a time constraint. Yeah. You know, mar marketers do it brilliantly all the time. It's like you've got 20 minutes to take up this offer or it's gone forever. You know, it's like, oh, shit, I've only got 20 minutes. Just think about like someone that did this thing to me the other day, work out how many days left of your life you have. Like well, the average man, I think, lives to about 77. So figure out how old you are now, figure out how many days you've got left. And, that's, and when you put it into days, you go, damn. So I'm 40. Let's just say I live another 33 years. I'm already past it. I'm already like live longer than, you know, what I've got left. So 33 years times 365, I've only got 12,045 days left. Wow. And tomorrow it's 12,044. And the day after it's only 12,043. Imagine you were to tick that off every time. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? If you tick that off every day and it, it just brings that level of urgency. I did, I did something similar where, where I said that, you know, the age that I wanted to get to and, I, and, and in a meditative state, I found the date and I the, the date of my death, as it were. And as I just sat there, I said, this isn't forever, Dan. This is not forever. Do it now. Yeah. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Very good. Well, Daniel Francis, thank you so much. Daniel Francis, the founder of Elite Man Academy. If you have enjoyed listening to Daniel, you'll like what he has to say. Uh, do go to elitemanacademy.com. Where else, Daniel, before you and I do a snap, yeah. where else can I find you? Absolutely. I've got a, and just for, for your listeners as well, if, if you go to freegiftfromdaniel.com and you can get hold of um, what I call it the confidence equation, because a lot of things that stop us from really driving for the things that we want is about confidence. And so we've got a, a formula there that really helps to build that confidence in four very key um, and specific steps as well free gift from daniel.com free gift from daniel.com so uh thank you we're going to say goodbye now to our live facebook uh, uh followers um so thank you so much to those who ask questions including yvonne grace and jeff Conz. i appreciate that thank you connie blacker who was there she or she couldn't make it she was on a work call she said she's going to watch the replay uh, just a reminder you can watch the replay of this the video component of it on my facebook page or you can watch this on 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 youtube uh, Yvonne Grace is actually saying, awesome. Thank you for motivating. Why isn't this taught in schools? That's valuable insight. We're working so on it. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Um, so goodbye to the Facebook viewers now. I'm just going to shut off. Farewell. Uh, just a reminder before we go, make sure to the Facebook followers, make sure you do follow me on Snapchat because I'll be doing little live things. Um, you can follow my life uh, 10 seconds at a time uh 10 second videos at a time i'll do about six or seven a day so you can see kind of some of the cool people that i'm meeting and what i'm doing and how i live my life um so do follow me on snapchat it's james swanick s-w-a-n-w-i-c-k thanks for watching see you later facebook live okay so we're just ending that live video now if you're still listening on the podcast stick around because uh daniel's about to give us a 10 second version of how to live your best life um, and you can watch this on Snapchat as well. Let's just do this. Hang on one second. We're just going to wrap it up here. 
Okay, cool. So there you go. Now you're on, on my Facebook live uh, page. If you want to watch the replay, Daniel, you can go and follow me, James Swanick, and you'll see that there. Uh, let's move to Snapchat. Um, and if you're listening or watching this, Snapchat, uh, my Snapchat is James Swanick. If you're not familiar with Snapchat, I was a reluctant uh, user of it up until very recently when I started. Now I realize the power of it uh, because you can take little 10 second videos of your life and people can come in and follow your story throughout the day. So you can see cool little things that, you know, people that you want to follow are doing. I follow people like Ty Lopez, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, John Romanello, um, Lewis Hamilton, the race car driver. It's really cool. So it's, a, it's a, like a little TV series that you can watch in people's lives throughout the day. Uh, cool. So here we go. We're going to record this. Um, I'm going to say Daniel Francis men's mentor, What's the number one way for leading an extraordinary life? And then you're going to give me like a five second version. It could be one sentence because it's only 10 seconds. Are you ready? Yep. Three. Here we go. Daniel Francis, men's mentor. How do we lead an extraordinary life? Ask yourself, what would you love? And then figure out what's stopping you from doing it and then take them out of the picture. I love it. Let's see if we made that here. Daniel Francis, men's mentor. How do we lead an extraordinary life? Ask yourself, what would you love? And then figure out what's stopping you from doing it. And then... There we go. That's what we got. There we but go. That's, okay. right. that's it. And it's real. <laughs> it's real. So there we go. We cut off the last part, but that's going on Snapchat now. So thank you very much uh, for that. Daniel Francis, this has been great. Remember to go to Elite Man Academy or free gift from Daniel.com and uh, continued health and continued success to you, Daniel. Fantastic. And thank you for what you're doing as well, uh, James. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I love, love seeing you and watching you and seeing what you're doing. And it's just, it's, the energy is fantastic. Thank you so much, Jenna. I really appreciate it. And thank you to the listener for listening. Thank you to the viewer for watching. And I will catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking right here. And make sure you put your phone up and follow me on Snapchat. You know, you put your phone up and you take the screenshot and then you automatically follow you on Snapchat. You know what I'm talking about. You can do that right there. When you do that, you're gonna be able to follow my daily life, little 10 second videos, and I'm gonna be giving you awesome little tips on how to live the good life. So go ahead, subscribe here, follow me on Snapchat there, and I'll wait for you. Okay.